Hey, how's it going guys? I'm Paradoxic, and welcome back to Supergirl, the time on Season 5, Episode 17, titled Deus Lex Machina. Um, and last time we had Alex in Wonderland, and that was a great, fun episode, showcasing Alex as Supergirl, one of the options we saw her exploring in VR. We only saw her exploring the Supergirl one, though. I think it would have been cool to see, like, more of the other options. Like, we did see young Alex returning, um... And her being the one that Kelly sent in to help her escape the VR after Alex was, you know, um, was caught victim to the glitch in the VR that hadn't yet been patched up for whatever. Well, we know the reason. We kind of know the reason, but we saw young Alex being sent in to help her recognize reality and stuff. I think it would have been cool to see her exploring some motherhood, maybe her exploring her, her pathway as a doctor as well and stuff like that. But we had her as Supergirl with her own black and blue Supergirl suit. And we had another woman in there who was also, she wasn't yet a victim, I don't think, but another, another woman in there cosplaying as Supergirl. So that was fun. Um, but yeah, this one was it, it, it was mainly like an escape for her from reality because, you know, finding out Jeremiah had died brought out a lot of like deep, deep buried feelings within her and she decided that she wasn't going to go to the funeral because, you know, her and Jeremiah never fully got along once Kara um, was planted into the picture. So that kind of stuff brought out a lot of uh, repressed feelings for her and then she spent the entire episode escaping that pain and then in the end Kelly saved her and she actually ended up going to the funeral afterwards and stuff was right again uh, but that was fun uh, we saw Kelly working with uh, Will for a bit to help him um, investigate Alex and his activities with Obsidian and stuff um, and William discovered the warehouse he got the warehouse from a pal from, from a friend of his at the NSA, I think you mentioned. I think was it the NSA. I think I was about to say the NRA, but probably not the NRA. Probably not the NRA. I think the NSA um, gave them an address to a warehouse, and the warehouse was where they were keeping all the bodies. And the Granny of Doom was there, but she had some mystical powers of her own, where she just camouflaged um, herself and all the bodies and the monitors and everything from Will. And he didn't take a, an inch of a step forward after that, um, so he didn't see anything there. But he did find a medical patient band that kind of gave him some clues so he does have some gist and some kind of suspicions of his own but he's not really investigating too much further um but yeah those bodies are all the people i think we we we, we met two other people i think bonnie was another woman in there who was cosplaying as a treasure hunter tilly and then there was another guy in there called derek who lost his wife and he escaped into it but the the the, the, the glitch isn't just keeping people in there but it's keeping them trapped in, trapped in trapped in there under the illusion that the VR is actual is actual reality that there is no other world and then their bodies in the real world are just motionless and dead and well somewhat dead and they're just kind of you know easy pickings for Leviathan so they're they're stashing all those all those bodies in the warehouse and keeping them alive they're keeping them stable they have they they are monitoring their vitals so I'm guessing my guess is they're building some kind of army or some kind of group or something because, you know, I, I don't know why else they would want the bodies and I think keeping them trapped under the, the VR influence would leave their bodies more susceptible to some kind of brainwashing or control or whatever, but whatever it is, the patch wasn't ever patched, the, the glitch wasn't ever patched up and I think this is why, so Lex clearly has something to do with this too. Um, or maybe this could all be Leviathan, I think, I think that this could simply be Leviathan, they, this is their agenda, what Lex worked his way in for his own agenda but that's that stuff and in the end we did see Alex and Kelly taking each other to the funeral and uh, ev well pretty much the entire super family was there Jean was there Brainy was there Nia was there Cara was there everyone was there and Eliza was giving the eulogy so it was a nice kind of ending for that episode her finally confronting those feelings and actually um, going to the funeral and stuff so it was a fun episode fun episode so yeah uh, looking forward to this one uh, Deus Lex Machina, I think it, that's a play on the, uh, I mean, you know what, I don't actually think it's a play on the game, because I think it's a fairly l Latin phrase, but yeah, I don't know, I don't know what it means, but either way, that's the episode, that was the uh, last episode, Alex in Wonderland, so episode 17, Deus Lex Machina, let's go. Whoa, okay, this is new. Oh, present day, 90 days post-crisis. I'm sorry, what's this? You saved them, Mr. Luther. Oh, hell no. No. This cannot be how this unrolls. Wait a minute. No. These people all think Lex saved them. Yeah. Lex the one who put him in here? Sure, Lex was behind this. He still is. Yeah, we all he should. This is. I don't understand. This is Lex's plan. Be the hero. Lex? Yeah. 
No, see, that, that is a classic evil villain smile. Like, yeah, look at me, I'm the hero now. No, that is classic Lex Luthor. Yeah, new day. The dawn of a new world. A new universe. I saved the world. Sold in a day's no, Oliver Queen saved through. the world. Get your facts right. I made a new no, you didn't. Oliver did. Don't, de don't discredit him. Do not discredit the Green Arrow. Oh, jeez, no. Uh, no offense to John Cryer, but I could not disagree more with that. Any chance you've seen my darling sister around? Yeah, she's sleeping like an angel. She'll gravitate toward you. Oh, directed by the Super Queen herself. Okay, you okay. Your... You think this is your world now? This is Earth Prime, not Lex Prime. Okay. You were a boy. Oh, sparkly dress, Kung Fu. Ms. Tessmarker. She's got moves. But you turned them down. So they murdered your father to change your mind. Ah. Uh... But they forced you to do their bidding. I don't want to kill anyone. No, he needs inside help. This isn't about Eve. He needs inside help to destroy Leviathan. Keep working at Leviathan and be yep. my eyes and ears. See? Inside person. In return, uh -huh. I promise I'll protect you. Oh, gee. I'll do it for you. Oh, he, he's, uh, he's never had any issues being a murderer, so that much makes sense. City North. Those cars belong to ex Mossad agents that I've hired to guard your mother around the clock. Oh, I thought that was going to be a death threat for a second. I convinced Gamine I would be. Is it not Gamemni? Is it Gamine? This glitch will be fixed long before the launch of Obsidian Platinum. Mm mm mm. And when Leviathan can't fix it, they'll have to cover it up, and that's where I come. Ah, you helped them cover it up. Ah ha ha Corruption is his forte. Oh, you know what? Just give me the bottle. Oh, Jesus. John Cryer with long hair. Damn. He could up it. He could improve his condition again, though. Hmm. I will offer up Supergirl to protect Andrea and Obsidian. So this is how so make sure uh, that Amy Eve Sapphire was a part of all of this. Ah, uh, Eve was part of all of this. Supergirl. I feel the same. But we have to stay focused on our goals. Are they in love with each other now? From them and avenge your father. No, tell me they're in love now. Who or what is a Margot? The, the, the Granny of Doom. The Granny of Doom. The Granny of Doom. That's why I tracked down the man who murdered your father. Just like I said. I oh, so she can get a vengeance kill. He's in the Peruvian Andes working undercover with an Indian. Oh, oh what? I should put a bullet in his head. It was Jeremiah? Was no, it can't that's have been Jeremiah. No. No, that's a ploy. That's a ploy. Look like an accident. You can handle that, right? That's a ploy. It would never be Jeremiah. Jeremiah would never have done that. Zelina following Kara? Are we gonna get a reunion? After all this time, are we gonna get a reunion? We're getting a reunion! Kara, this helped me a lot with memories the of book. Memory. Well, it helped with Luther family difficulties. I'm sure it'll help me a lot. Is that a therapy book or a storybook? Thank you. <sighs> Bittersweet. Bittersweet. First, it's an apology. Then it's coffee before work. Next thing you know, they're playing Pictionary. That cannot happen! Next thing you know, they're dating. Don't you think that it's weird that we're sitting here eating dumplings like everything is normal and yet Jeremiah is gone? He's been gone for seasons. You know, this changes I mean, very little. The thing about life is that things change. Scones, sticky toffee pudding, and banoffee pie. Sticky toffee pudding? Oh, okay. But onto Richard Bates. Oh, yeah, the first person they discovered. Yeah. One and the same. Yeah. And first dude. This. Bonnie Walker. Yeah. I, Tilly. I, I met this girl in VR. People are oh, Eve. God it. damn it. Gemma, or uh, Gamine, or would you prefer uh, Goddess of Isn't it Gamemni? It brings love and wealth and, of course, fertility. Does it also bring the end of Leviathan? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you ask Supergirl? I'm sure there's something at that fortress of hers that could happen. <laughs> myriad. What is it, Myriad? Hey, is he thinking of Myriad? It was empty. That was what Lena wanted to I disperse the key waves originally. Damn, Lena looks. Is that burgundy or is that. I don't know. Crimson red? I don't know. Whatever color it is, looks great on Lena. Oh, God. 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 Oh,
You saw Supergirl yesterday? <laughs> yep, he's manipulating them back against each other. No, no, I don't like Lex. It goes without saying, I do not like Lex. Uh, no, what's she gonna see? What's she gonna see? Oh, what's that? What the hell was that? What was following her into the portal? You just returned to your default position of blaming a Luther. Lex is a very blamable Luthor. You acted like one, yeah. I did say that. Do you think that I was sincere with you yesterday? Is she gonna take I back her condolences? Uh, something followed her into the portal. Is that still there? That is still there. Whatever the hell that thing is. Oh no, 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 no. The Sun Eater, no. Oh God. We can use a Lexo suit from the DEO. You want to trust Lex stuff again? One thousand watts per meter. Magan. Magan. Your brother felt the key. Damn, my suit. And sent me. Oh shit, Magan's back. Oh, it'll look so good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People have watched Star Wars. Oh, Magan's back. That's awesome. Yeah, Mr. and Mrs. Martian. Or Mr. and Ms. Martian, I should say. Yeah. So ignore the Sun Eater. Just jump into VR. Pretend nothing is wrong. Pretend nothing bad is happening. Is that the guy from Clerks? I, I can't recognize him. Is he, is he the guy from Clerks? Oh, God, it's so big. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Yeah. Okay, back to being a baby again. Not a full grown adult. Back to being a baby again. Yeah. Too bad your plan didn't work, Lex. Oh, or apparently it still fucking did. Whoa! Oh! Oh! She is a technological being. Techno organic, maybe. Or maybe that's just a camouflage. Amy Sapphire was right. Technology is the greatest evil. Oh! She. Forged her. Oh, it was Eve! It was my appetite. <laughs> Wait, but Margot's still dead, but the video was so Eve. It's because of who you are. That's the reason why you should be deterred and not attracted. Of course you love me. What's funny is you thought I could love you back. Oh, this is frozen all over again. This is frozen all over again. I don't understand. Oh, Eve, if only yeah, there was someone out there who loved you. We're... I needed a spy inside Leviathan. Oh, and uh, as for your mother, is she dead? She's still in danger. The men in them are just waiting to pull the trigger if you ever betray me. I knew but it. Death threat. Death threat. That. I knew it. That man mm -hmm. you killed in the Andes. I have video of you killing him, by the way. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, me, you do not want to be on the wrong side of those laser eyes. Oh, uh, shit. You are worse than Leviathan. Better. No, just as bad as Leviathan. Last destination. The fortress. Is he going into the fortress? He's in the fortress! Oh no, this spells chaos. This spells destruction. No, that cannot end well. That cannot end well. Oh, end of the episode. End of the episode. Can I just say, right? Melissa Benoist did a bang up job. She did a top notch job. That was a great, a, a super well done episode. Um. But yeah, oh, that's such a good episode. Um, yeah, yeah, Melissa did a great job with that, actually bringing everything in, Lex Luthor style, actually executing a Lex Luthor-centric episode in, you know, classic Lex style, just showing off his manipulation, seeing how he balances the, hey, new world, new good guy, and the new world, same old Lex, kind of, that kind of dynamic, she balanced that really well. Um... So, yeah, Eve as well, she brought Eve back in a really fun way, in a really clever way. I think Eve, I think this, I think, I, I think, I don't know if her backstory changed with this, because I think pre-crisis, she gave that backstory of how she was recruited at 16 by Leviathan, and she had no one else and nothing else, and then they gave her a home and they trained her into this, but with this one, post-crisis, um, she was she uh, Leviathan attempted to recruit her because she was brilliant, and initially she dis she um refused, and then as revenge they killed her father, and then it was when they threatened her mother's life that she then said, okay, yeah, sure, just don't kill her and I'll do it, I'll work for you. So she did. Um, so I think I think that's I think I don't know if if, if that happened at the same age or if that was like a more somewhat more recent thing, but that's how Leviathan recruited her now. 
Um, but yeah, with Lex, I knew it. I knew it from the beginning. You know, Lex just was manipulating Reeve. He, he didn't need her because she was brilliant. He needed her because he needed someone on the inside of Leviathan to help manipulate their plans and to help manipulate against them. So he needed someone on the inside. I knew it from the beginning. Um, Jeremiah... I knew that as well. He manipulated Eve. Eve, so Eve is the one who killed Jeremiah. <laughs> so it was never. I think it was just like poison that masks the death as a cardiac arrest, perhaps. But she, but he manipulated her into killing Jeremiah, so that she could never go back against him. Because he said, you know, he has video of killing of her killing Jeremiah. So if she ever defies him, then he'll send that video off and probably send it to Supergirl. And then Supergirl, them already knowing that in the pre-crisis world, Eve worked um for lex and she she was working for lex the entire time to betray to, to just waiting to betray lena and then she was divided all along as well so they already know that stuff so they're, they're not exactly seeing her as the best of here the, the, the best of their allies right now um so that kind of stuff and then um yeah, and then the mother thing, you know, him saying that there were ex Mossad agents out there bodyguarding her. I knew, no, like, I had a feeling, like, up until he said bodyguard, I had a feeling he said, you know, oh, um, like, like he was gonna say it in a really passive aggressive and calm way, like, oh, if you ever defy me, I'll just tell them to, you know, put two bullets in the in the front and back of your mother's head, and then you'll have no one else. So make sure you don't defy me, and that won't happen. And but then, you know, he masked it as bodyguarding, and in the end, it's like, no, they're actually just waiting. They're waiting to be able to kill her on my orders. So defy me, you lose. The the, the one and only blood relative you have um well no she has an aunt i think doesn't she i think so because i think like last season we we, we 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 had her curing her aunt with the harinel serum um uh, uh, of her disease so i think I don't, I don't know if she's still alive in post crisis but either way but yeah i think melissa just really did a good good a good job of actually sh like um making a post crisis uh, luther uh, um lack centric episode of showing how he's actually He's somewhat flawless. He's somewhat flawlessly actually balancing the good guy act, like the new, the new world, new good guy act, and the new world, same old Lex with the same old plans act. Like he's still, it, he, he, he's, he's discovered a newer enemy, and he's reborn into a world. He, he's allowed himself to be reborn into a world that loves him and idolizes him and stuff. But he has a new enemy that he has a new chance to manipulate. Um, and he can work with them to take out Supergirl, so then that Kryptonian is off the board, and then he can just you know take, just, just you know you, you use that newfound power to wipe out Leviathan too. So it's always about him. It's always about him. But seeing seeing how he manipulated all of the all, all of the post crisis season events was actually really fun too. Like him, um, you know, like doing the whole uh, the, the the I mean, we saw how he was manipulating the bodyguard stuff with Supergirl um, and, and Andrea Rojas. Um, but yeah, but then him t telling Eve to like convince them to not fix up the glitch so that then he could have a chance to actually to, like you know because then if it's not fixed then they have no choice but to cover it up and then that's where he comes in to actually help them to help them cover up their own faults and their own crimes and stuff and then you know like avoiding avoiding or even using all legal blue poles um that kind of stuff to seeing how much of the season uh, of this post-crisis season so far he's influenced um it, 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 it was just really well done and then, of course, he re-manipulates Lena back into hating Supergirl by telling her that she's using Myriad, um, or by allowing her to find out that she's using Myriad, but then convincing Brainy to go to Supergirl and tell her to use Myriad. Like, he's, he's, just, he's just got all these people just hanging off his fingers like puppets, playing them against each other, playing them against each other there, and they're just manipulating all these events. And then the Sun Eater came out again. McGann, that was a cool, uh, cool character return to see. Um, and she had her own suit and stuff, and uh, we, we, we didn't see um, Malefic, but McGann came back to help them with the Sun Eater, and that was a, that, that, that was a big Sun Eater. I think it was, it was a, it's a baby in the fortress, but then once it actually comes out of the room and it leaves Earth and it goes on to, to try and eat the Sun, it actually grows bigger and bigger. Uh, but that was a that was that was a fun thing to see. But he he manipulated Lena back against um, Supergirl as well. Like, so I was I was afraid. Like, I, was, I was thinking like you know you know what I take back my condolences. I'm not sorry your dad died. But no, she was still sympathetic on that front. But at the same time, I think th th there was more focus on her on Supergirl having used Myriad. Um, and I think what's surprising about that is that she still has memories of pre-crisis, like of Lex pre-crisis. So she knows just how willing he is to help her if it means he can manipulate her so why she would have doubt in the first place like sure he's helped her with no no cherry um but then again like yeah like it's all confusing but like you know like she 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 know and i think i think it doesn't help that he used the truth seeker to be like you know um oh i'll help you and you know i'll, I'll never betray you unless i feel the need to see fit and well so he used the truth seeker to 
to properly confirm her suspicions, but at the same time, like, she she still has memories. She she is one of those people. Like like um, Alex made sure of it that you know she would not that she would come out safe and sound from crisis, but she also has memories of um the pre-crisis world and the timeline. So she knows just exactly who Lex can be, regardless of how much he claims he wants to help you. So why why she would jump into that with having doubts, I'm not really sure, and then still blaming Supergirl um, for using Myriad. I don't know, but yeah, I don't know. That that that, that, that one just felt weird to me. I think um, one thing I really liked was how, how well Melissa managed the tone shifts from the different um, Supercore interactions, like the first one being Lena just going up to Kara, you know, just seeing her as Kara and just actually, you know, sharing her condolences that way. And then afterwards with the whole Lex manipulation thing, you know, Supergirl, um, Lena blaming Supergirl for the hypocrisy of using, you know, like that kind of tone shift was really, really well handled. Um, and I think, again, it's like, the 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 condolence the the condolence scene was bittersweet. It was it it, it was short. They like you could tell they were, but they were they, like you know Lilina especially felt awkward about it. And you know Car even pointed out like yeah I get I guess it can feel awkward sharing your condolences with the woman who last time you saw her accused you of being a villain. So yeah, she handled that really well. And then afterwards, um, the 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 the, the scene in the fortress like them kind of going back into what their original dilemma was, the trust and the hypocrisy that um the that, that, that Lena sees in her. That was really well balanced. So yeah, I think just Melissa just did top notch top notch job of this episode. It was just a really like in like fun episode to see how it balanced out and how it actually unfolded. Um all thanks to Lex, like Lex just you know, you you just envision Lex's puppet hands at the at the top playing with the strings and everything and just picking them against each other and making sure that nothing would get in his way because you know if, if Lena does actually somehow end up um because he, he even said that you know first it's asking an apology then they're getting coffee and breakfast together then they're playing Pictionary then it moves on to whatever else so he needed to make sure that his sister and her former best friend didn't get back together again so yeah he's not a very supportive brother <laughs> he's not a very supportive brother but I see Lena is moving forward with Nona Chariot. She was on, I think, patient uh, 054. So I think I'm assuming, you know, numerically that does mean patient 54. So, yeah, like, you know, just halfway to 100 patients. Well, just over halfway to 100 patients um, for Nona Chariot. And, like, he had, like, a head brace thingy on and stuff. And he was, you know, post Nona Chariot. And he wasn't showing any bad signs, I don't think. So she's, yeah, so she's... I think I'm, I'm assuming I'm assuming that that's still somewhat in the human trial section because I think the first time we saw her, she tested it and then she also managed to somewhat patch a glitch as well, just patch something that you know just just wasn't working originally. So she is moving more and more forward with this thing. Um, so yeah, I think I don't I don't know how the no no cherry stuff is going to fit into all, all of this. I think I don't know if you know I don't I don't I mean I I think maybe the better it gets, the better it gets. Um, you know at doing what it's supposed to have like because it's meant to stop people from harming each other and having those thoughts as well i think i think it it's meant to stop people having harming each other or just having those thoughts to begin with but then the people who already have that deep-rooted trauma that was the issue she had first so then removing that as well goes the i think you know it would go the extra mile so seeing how well it works now i don't know if you know um lex would see all of this progress and think oh maybe this could work for leviathan like how they would like apply that i'm not i'm not sure but i think knowing lex he would come up with something no lex knowing lex he would come up with something he would you know he would congratulate her and you know um give her a applause for it and then in the end he would go behind her back steal it and then give it to leviathan and then you know like or you know convince them to use it for their own soldiers or whatever because i think well, no, well, I mean, I don't know, the, the, the way it ended, like, all those people, Bonnie and Richard, and I think presumably Derek, like, all, all, all the people who were caught victim by the Obsidian glitch were released, and they were all calling Lex a hero, and he, you know, planted up that scene, killed Margot, killed the Granny of Doom, and then had, I think, yeah, I think the Granny of Doom herself is dead, but then, um... Eve was image inducing as her and then she put on her voice as well so she managed to make the video, but I think they probably killed Margot before that. Um, so... Yeah, so they they've they've released all the people. So the people are released. So that means there's no more, you know, victims of the. I mean, I think I I don't I don't think the I I don't think the glitch has been patched up. I think it's just a way of actually you know reassuring the public that everything's okay when everything's really still not. Um, but yeah, so he's released all those people. So I think he might use Nona Cherry on them, or I, I don't know. I don't. I I I feel I I just feel like the way things are going, the better the 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 more secure and the more you know. 
the more like efficient Nanachari gets, Lex is going to see it and he's going to see use in it and he's going to go behind Alina's back to better apply it for his own needs or for Leviathan's needs um, and he's going to use it against them. But um, but his main plan is to, his main plan of defeating Leviathan is still to use Toy Man's mortality code and reverse engineer it and then enter that into their ship and take them out. So yeah, that is still his main plan. But I think you know he's he's Lex. He's got you know little sub plans rooting their way into like this this like like this little shadow assassins they are. But yeah, that's that. I think we saw a cameo from a guy of Clerks like. I think I haven't seen Clerks, right? I haven't seen Clerks, but I do recognize the guy. I've seen screenshots and different clips of people celebrating Clerks and it's kind of like nostalgic elements and stuff. But if we go back, I'm like 90% sure that guy is from Clerks. Yeah, if we go back to the other scenes. Yeah, him. I'm like, yeah, I'm like 90% sure he's got. And Kevin Smith, um,. Kevin Smith, he has direct he he's a he has directed episodes of The Flash, I believe, and Supergirl. I think I don't know, I don't know if he's done Arrow or Legends, but I think The Flash and Supergirl I've seen he's directed episodes of that. So this guy, I think he was in Clerks with um with Kevin Smith. So I haven't again I haven't seen Clerks. Don't know if I should watch it, but yeah, I recognize him from some screenshots of him with Kevin Smith in Clerks, and I think there's a new movie that came out with those two same characters that that Kevin Smith made after he had his old heart attack ordeal. He made another movie, um, which is just ambitious as all hell. Uh, but yeah, I recognize him as Kevin Smith's friend. I feel bad for that because I don't know his actual name, but I think he I, I do recognize him from Clerks from that movie. So. Uh, that's cooler, but I think it, it, it makes sense that, you know, Kevin being associated and attached to the CW like that would be able to get his friend in on the business too, so that was fun, that was fun, but yeah, I think, um, I think, yeah, I think that's more, again, like, the, 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 that was also more of a reason that, you know, um, that the glitch isn't actually yet fixed because, you know, they they, they used the Sunny to think they were like, you know, they were convincing, they, they were on the radio convincing people, you know, just escape reality, ignore what's happening in front of you, just jump into VR, jump into safety and comfort, ignore the Sunny to about to destroy the sun and also the planet in, in, in the process, just, you know, jump into VR. So the more people that they jump into VR, the more people they can, you know, pull into their glitchy grips and stuff. So that was their... That was their plan all along, but yeah, this Lex and Leviathan stuff, Lexiathan, Lexiathan, that's, that's what we're going to call them, I don't know, I don't know if there's an, there's an official name, they're not an OTP, they're not a ship, they're, 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 they are a, a rather malicious pairing, but I don't know if there's a name for them yet, but regardless, that's that's what they're going to be called. Um, and I think it was interesting how, like, at the beginning, like, you know, straight away after post-crisis, I think it was nice also seeing the, this progression as well, like, one day after post-crisis, a month after post-crisis, two months after post-crisis, like, that was a nice progression of just how much time he spent manipulating all of this, partnering up with Leviathan, but then using this stuff against them, manipulating Lena against Steve, making all this stuff happen so the Supergirl gets involved, but then, you know, he has to take her out at the same time, so that was, uh, that was interesting, but straight after crisis, straight after crisis, he meets up with Lillian, they have their own little discussion and Lillian, L Lillian reminds him that in this new world they are seen as heroes he is the man of tomorrow he's the times he's somehow he I, I don't know how but he's somehow the sexiest man of the year I don't know how that works but you know like again no offense to John Cryer he's a handsome dude but Lex you know you know how they say when you're ugly on the inside it shows on the outside it yeah <laughs> um, but he's somehow winning all these awards and the Nobel Peace Prize and everything but yeah, she, she she's the one who convinces him to use that to his advantage and be like, you know what, be the the hero the world thinks you are, be the hero the world thinks you are, um, and also help Lena, this is a new world, to forge a better relationship with Lena so that, you know, on the off chance that, that you do decide to betray her, she furthermore never sees it coming, but also this is a new world, a new chance, and if we want to still you know, betray the world and take over for ourselves, we have to do it right. So, you know, like, you know, just, you know, d don't jump straight into the bandwagon of Luther versus Kryptonian. Actually, warm up to the people, for, warm up to the people for a bit. So then, you know, even if you do, the, 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 so down the road, even if you do end up being bad things, it can't be traced back to you because they're like, oh, he's a hero. He could never do that. Um, but yeah, started off all with that, you know, conv the, 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 conv the, the convincing to help um, Lena with her stuff and actually befriend her again. Um, and then it leads into all of this. So, yeah, Lillian was the other puppet master all along. I mean, she always has been, pretty much. But, yeah, that was cool. 
but yeah, that ending, that that, that final scene with um, with Eve in like after she could everything, that was some straight out. Of, that was straight out of Frozen. That was like live action Frozen. That was a live action Frozen. The fact that you know, like um, like you know, like uh, Lex finally reveals that he just need he needed Eve to be his person inside. He didn't actually love her. He was like you know, like it was stra- it, it was literally taken out of Frozen. Like you know, like oh of course you could love me. Look at me. I'm me. I'm you know handsome. I'm smart. I'm the man of tomorrow. But you, you're just Eve. You're just the person I needed on the inside of Leviathan to help manipulate them even further. And yeah, if you try anything, I will kill you and everyone you love. And you know, I'll kill your mother first so you can watch that happen. But then I'll kill you too. And well, actually, no, I won't even kill you. I'll just release this footage of you killing Supergirl's dad, and then I'll I'll sit. Back Back and watch a sheet kills you so yeah that was some straight up but frozen stuff like you know oh eve if only there was someone out there who felt about you the same way you feel about me um and even even referencing the pre-crisis world like being like you know oh in another world and another in, in another world and another time we could have been great together and hell even pre-crisis you were madly in love with me but i'm never gonna be in love with you no never um but yeah the way she pulled off that scene just Live action Frozen, basically live action Frozen. Just, just you know, just just the thinking about how, also just you know, acknowledging how you know he let her continue believing. He didn't even he didn't even warn her at the beginning. He was like, you know what, she's uh, just she she you know she's too innocent and sweet to betray like that. Just lead her along for a little while. Lead her along, and then at the end, at the end, reject her feelings, but also warn her what could happen if she tries to betray you. Yeah, that's just you know Lex Luthor. Lex Lex is basically the Hans of um. Of Supergirl, he's basically the Hans of Supergirl, but yeah, um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know if that makes um, Eve the Anna. Don't know if that makes Eve the Anna, but I'm not sure. But that it just it just had Frozen written all over it. So yeah, and then of course at the end we see that um, Lex managed to use um, Lex managed to use uh, Lena using his watch to enter the fortress to his advantage. That was the last location, the last location on his watch. So he he managed to use that to his advantage, and he's in the he's in the fortress now. He is in the fortress. I mean, and it's not gonna the, yeah. And because the Luthors are seen as allies to Supergirl, the, 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 there are no alarms gonna go off. No alarms are gonna go off. There's gonna be no defense system jumping up and trapping him in a laser grid or anything. He's just gonna be welcomed there. Like oh, it's Lex, Lex Luthor. He's the man of tomorrow. He's a friend of Supergirl. So let him in. No. Care Alex jumping up to warn him, um, or even if he does, Lex will probably destroy him. But um, but yeah, he's he's free to to explore and peruse the uh, the the shelves and or and whatnot of the of the fortress. So he can take anything he want, and she probably I mean unless Supergirl visits the fortress again, he, she's probably not gonna know. So. That spells bad news. That spells very bad news. I think. I think. He, I, I don't know if he's. Gonna, I don't know if he's going to try and steal Myriad or whatever. Whatever. He's probably just going to have a look inside. See, so, so, like, just you know, just be like, a, like a evil kid in a candy store. But he's definitely going to do a lot of exploring and you know, to, to, to take take some trinkets. But he's probably going to take some trinkets and be like, oh, that looks cool. That looks cool. And just to take that for his little trophy um, selection. But then he's actually going to look through what he can use against Supergirl and against Leviathan and take that stuff too. So shelves are going to be empty. Shelves are going to be empty. I, I see shelves are going to be empty. But yeah, or alien icy shelves because the fortress isn't built from anything built by anything from Earth. So you know, you, even you know, Ramakan knew that. But yeah. Um, yeah, that was that. Um, what else? Gamemni, we saw her true form. Well, I mean, they, they, they're they calling her Gamini now. Or like, um, g- 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 Gam- Gamena? I think it's Gamini they called her. I think, yeah, I think we, we her, her human name is Gemma Cooper, but then we heard Ramakan calling her Gamemni in the mid-season finale. And now post-crisis, we see, um, we, we, we hear Eva, uh, the Eva, the Eve, and Lex calling her Gamini. So I don't know what to call her, but she is, her true form was shown. She tased, Lex a bit, and then her skin turned to like in you know, like um, almost like like android parts, like robot parts, and then she had like a diamond in her head and stuff. So she's very much technological. I think that was like from her introduction, that was the, the, the that was the way that they described it. Like you know, even her plan, her plan always revolved around technology. She 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 saw that you know that they were in like a new modern age, and how humans relied on technology so much, so they could use that against them. So she was also always the technology expert of stuff whereas Ram Khan was the one who he was on he was the one responsible for Pompeii and the plagues and the black death and all that stuff he was the natural disasters guy so that stopped working and then Gamemni came forward with her own technological plan with Obsidian North and all that stuff so it's cool to see her true form that way uh, but now Lex has given them a new plan um 
to stop Supergirl. Um, t- taking out Supergirl is how they move forward because Supergirl otherwise will always, um, always get in their way. And that's it's just Lex taking out two birds with one stone. So that's what it is. He's using his enemy to take out another enemy of his, and then you know after that, no one's going to stop him from killing from taking out Leviathan because he's still going to implant that code into their base. So yeah, just classic Lex. But I love, I love how 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 well Melissa did this episode. She did a top notch job. Um, love the Lex. I think, and yeah, I think as much as you hate Lex, it's still fun to see a Lex centric story to see exactly how he makes his plans and how he unfolds them. And just you know, o- o- over that period of time, it's like not even a year, not even a year after Crisis. It's like sixty days after Crisis, I think at most. Like not even a year after Crisis. Like just a month, maybe a couple of months at most. Um, and after all that time, he manipulates all the stuff. He le- he makes all the stuff happen. So it's a testament to how cunning and 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 you know how cunning and smart he actually is to actually make all this stuff happen and still cover his own ass. So, yeah, uh, but yeah, just hats off to Melissa. Hats off to Melissa. She did a great job. Hope to see, uh, hope we can see more of her directing more episodes in this. And I think, I like that, I think I think it's not really very many TV shows you see out there where the network actually encourages and allows the, the actors themselves to be able to direct many episodes of the show. I think, because I think, um, Danielle has uh, Danielle's directed um, several episodes of The Flash um, Legends I think Legends Katie's directed some episodes of Legends before Arrow I'm not too sure sh- I think I think Katie I think Katie Cassidy I think she she might have I think I'm not sure I think I think I think I vaguely remember Katie, Katie Cassidy's um, name appearing in the directing credits for some episodes of Arrow um, and now Melissa's directing this um, so it, it's cool that we can actually we can actually see the actors getting some hands-on experience on telling the story themselves as well, and actually starring in in, in this as well. So having a directorial debut and also starring in it as well, that's got to be cool. Um, so yeah, hoping I think um, have we had anyone else? I think I think David D- D- Davis directors too. So again, it's just fun seeing the CW directing these. I think I'm hoping at some point we we we, we, we it's like a. It's like an everyone gets one chance opportunity, so we can see Kyla directing something, we can see Arzi directing, Nicole directing, and just you know, just everyone getting like a chance to be able to tell a story in their way and actually advancing that way. So it's cool. It's cool. I think it's a cool program for the actors too to get some different experience besides from just acting in front of the camera and actually being able to control something for themselves. So yeah, great job to hats off to Melissa. Hats off to Melissa. So that was cool. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have from this one. I don't feel like I'm missing anything. I'm hoping I mentioned everything, but it's, it's just stuff that stuck out to me. It was a really well done episode. I loved how 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 well she handled uh, a eccentric story and how well, well that was done. And hats off to John Cryer too. He did a tremendous job actually showing all of this too. So yeah fun episode looking forward to how stuff goes down uh, going forward but now i think he did um i think because he was hailed as the hero who released all of the victims of the glitch i think he he is now that much closer to actually somewhat convincing uh team supergirl to actually trust him on this one as well um but i'm hoping they don't go forward with that i'm hoping they're smarter than that hoping they can actually see that you know um i think i wonder if they could do the same thing that he's doing like if they could pull the same scheme like you know use him use him to her to you use him to defeat leviathan but then defeat him after that too like he's using leviathan to help him defeat supergirl but then he's going to take out leviathan anyway so i wonder if you know it's cunning but it's also for the good like you know like you know it's clear that leviathan and lex Luthor are both the protect the the antagonists the antagonists of this season so I think uh, through that kind of formula, I think it, it, it would be fun to see if they if they at least consider it. If they at least consider the fact that you know, oh, we can use Lex to defeat Leviathan, and then after that, we double cross Lex and we defeat him too. I think that that would be a fun thing to see how they actually consider it. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But with that one, they they they, they, they are kind of becoming more and more they, they, like because of Lex's manipulation, they are being they, 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 they are being proven wrong more and more that Lex could be behind this or that Lex is a villain and stuff like that. So it's interesting to see how that advances. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much all I have from this one. So look forward to whatever's next to come. But yeah, that was Supergirl season five, episode 17, titled Deus Lex Machina. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed it, then salt and burn that like button. Uh, comment on what you thought of the episode and what you think is coming up next in this season and what you thought of uh, Melissa's job on this episode. And yeah, that's it. So I will see you guys next time.